Hey, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Let's Play Resident Evil. It's episode 9, and in the last episode, I don't think we really did very much. Well, we basically, we got to here. And I think we just gotta go this way now. Cover up the sexy tentacle hole. This game was made like the original was made back in the day where pushing boxes was like a really big deal. So many games had these kind of like push a block puzzles or something, push a crate, stuff like that. Ooh, that's a cool shot. Ooh, maybe I should have started the episode from there. Man, I really wish they'd make some more like action figures. For Resident Evil. I don't know what it is lately, man. Like, this whole year, I've been so into collecting figures. I guess it's the quality of things are getting really good these days. Or at least way better than they ever were when I was a kid. And it really just makes me want to collect a lot of stuff. Newspapers lie scattered about. And they all seem to contain articles about stars. Oh, you can see that way over there, but there's no way we're getting that map. Right, so this is what I got with me. It's locked. The door plate reads gallery. I don't remember if you... Like, do the bees come out if I take the map, or do they only come out... If I fuck with the hole? I think they only come out if I fuck with the hole. See, that's the thing I don't understand. You know, there was Brad, and he's trying to contact someone. He's flying around. He is not trying to abandon the team. And everybody fucking hates Brad. Here's Barry double fucking crossing us, and everyone loves this motherfucker. Like, because he talks weird, dude. Come on. Who doesn't love Barry? Dude, he tries to fucking kill us. I was like, well, his family was in danger. So fucking what, man? You can't give in to those kinds of threats and fear tactics and stuff. You gotta stand up for what's right. There's a map of the residence. Take it. You got the map of the residence. There's a hole in the wall here. Yeah, well. So what if there is? Jill. Barry, I heard someone talking. Oh, you heard. I think age is starting to take its toll. Talking to myself is becoming a bad habit. Talking to yourself? You all right? What's gotten into you? I'm getting you worried, aren't I? But don't, I'm all right. I guess this creepy mansion has gotten to my nerves. Anyway, I think I'll go outside, get some fresh air for a change. Don't worry, I'm just going to get some fresh air. If I'm lucky, I'll get to waste some monsters along the way. <laughs> okay. Man, Julie Vaughn is so fucking pretty. Plant 42 report. Four days have passed since the accident. The plant at point 42 is growing at an amazing rate. Although there are many unknown aspects about this plant, we know that in comparison with the other group of plants, the T-virus has had a substantially stronger effect on this one. 
The T-virus has drastically morphed its host's anatomy as well as its size. Looking at its current state, it's difficult to imagine its original appearance. Nowhere on Earth will you find anything like it. We've also found that the Plant 42 has two main sources of acquiring its necessary nutrients. One source is through its root. Somehow it has rooted itself down into the basement. Immediately after the accident, a scientist went mad and destroyed the aqua ring. Ever since the basement has been like a pool, there's a high possibility that it's one of the chemicals in the water that's promoting the Plant 42's rapid growth. However, we have yet to determine the specific chemical. A bulb-like body of the Plant 42 has been sighted hanging from the ceiling of the first floor. We are sure that it used the air ducts to reach the first floor. Numerous long tentacle-like vines are protruding from the bulb. We believe the vines are the second means of acquiring its nutrients. When the Plant 42 senses prey, it uses the tentacle-like vines to capture its prey. After doing so, suckers on the vine drain the prey of its blood. We've also noticed that it has some intelligence. When it captures its prey or when it's inactive, the vines twine around the door to stop possible intruders. Unfortunately, several of our scientists have already fallen victim to this Plant 42. When we heard the stories from the survivors, they all observed one thing in common. When the uniform petal-like flaps open and reveal its vital internals, it has a tendency to become more aggressive. One witness reported that it was as if it was trying to protect itself. Why it behaves the way it does is still unknown. May 21st, 1998, Henry Sarton. Hmm, we still got the... We still got another room with an important file back in the mansion, which I will read. I just didn't have what it what I needed to take care of those zombies at the time. Old newspapers and magazines lie on top of the bed. Someone appears to have vomited blood on some of the newspapers. Fucking Barry. What have we got going on here? There's nothing special. Am I possibly carrying too much crap on me? Before I start going down here? Because I think maybe I am. But is there a box? I don't remember. Oh, hey, look, a cowboy hat. There's nothing special. What do you mean it's a cowboy hat? Okay. You don't want to say anything about this stuff? Water drips from the sink. Perhaps the valve is broken. Will you take the residence key? Yes. Water is leaking from the tank. Let's examine that key before we investigate that door opening sound. Number 001 is imprinted. Okay, cool. We're going to go take care of that. Now, even though this is all scripted and such, I remember thinking how cool it is that you basically have zombies you know, like shuffling around. Oh, you fucking asshole. You son of a fucking bitch. Yes! Fuck you, random zombie dressed like some fucking 1940s college professor. I think we're good to just go all the way back.
can't remember which door you use the red book in, but I don't think it's even this one. You use the key, there's no further use for it. Discard, yes. Creepy. It's too bad you can't preemptively burn them. I really like that whole thing that they added for the Evil Within where you had to burn stuff. They just said when you're going to start upgrading. Well, when I played Evil Within, for me, it was different because I got really, really lucky at, you know, when you open up those secret lockers. I would always look for any keys and I usually I found a good amount. I didn't find all of them, but I found a really good amount. And um, basically what I did was I got really lucky when it when it came to opening them. And I don't know what it is, man. I'm just I'm good at that sort of thing about like. It's not that I have superpowers, even though, you know, who knows? Maybe I do. Maybe I do have superpowers, guys. But, like, when it comes to that sort of thing, I generally have pretty good luck. So, I ended up getting lots of that brain gel. So, I was able to upgrade myself um, pretty much to the max. Uh, so, right away, the very first thing I did was upgrade stuff like uh, to carry more matches and the sprint. That's what you want to upgrade first, sprinting. Uh, above all else and I maxed that stuff out pretty early on so I had a really fun time with the game I know for other people the limitations of that stuff kind of bothered them but uh for me I, I just I did that stuff right away I really really like the evil within and it really did feel like this kind of mix of of the things that were good about Resident Evil 4 and its action kind of sense and then there's the kind of creepy shit from the old Resident Evils I really really liked uh the evil within I haven't played the DLC and uh, I really want to. It's just that when I played it, I played it for PS3. And, uh, you know, I want to buy all that stuff for, for PS4. And then maybe one day I'll play it here on this channel. But, yeah. This bed shows signs of having been used. An old bookcase. The books are mostly concerned with literature and philosophy. Just a random little chair. I guess just someone just sits sits down. Like this is this isn't this guy's clothes. This was some female scientist he had a crush on. And then like he stole her clothes. And he just sits down here and just looks at her shirt and masturbates. Of course that's where my brain would take the I couldn't have thought of anything else. I was like, nope, this is all about masturbation right here. Clearly. Take one look at this. Jerk fest. What else could it be? Will you take the self defense gun? Yeah, sure, why not? Ooh, the suicide note. Well, this is sure to be depressing, but let's read it. June 22nd, 1998. I had to do it. We ran from those things, helping each other to survive. But Robert started to show the symptoms. I had to do it. Those damn things are pure evil. There was no other way. He would have done the same if it were the other way around. After I put him out of his misery, I had to just leave him in the bathroom. Now I'm probably the last one. How could this happen? I'll never forgive myself for being a part of this project. Eventually, I'll get what's coming to me, though. There's no way to escape from this nut house. It's just a matter of time now. Everything is set. All I need is a little courage to get it done. Knowing that I'll leave many things undone is regret beyond words. But this is better than just waiting to turn into one of them. Please understand and at least let me end my life as a person. There's a message on the back. Linda, please forgive me. Well, unfortunately, you must have been already infected or something. Although he's got bite marks. I mean, if his friend is in the bathroom and, and, he, and he shot him to put him out of his misery... 
And then he came out here figuring there's no hope for him. And then, well, it's like I'm putting this up his ass. You like that? Uh, then, then I feel like he must have been bit too. And so when he says that his friend would have done the same for him, well, then how come you're not the one dead on the floor and your friend out here writing fucking journals? So I feel like maybe he wasn't bit and he didn't show any signs just yet. You know? He goes into that bathroom. He kills his friend. He comes over here. He writes that note. Then he hangs himself. And then other zombies just wandering around maybe make their way in and start chewing on him. But that theory doesn't work because I needed a key to open the door to get in here. So I think this is just one of those cases of video games where it's like, look, they only have so many fucking zombie character models, okay? So ignore the, the wounds on his leg and his back. And just pretend that he doesn't have any and, you know, yeah. I guess unless they come in here, they lock the door, he kills his friend in the bathroom, he comes out here, writes his suicide note, hangs himself... His friend gets up, comes out of the bathroom, starts fucking chewing on him, eating him. I don't know, gets full, and then decides to just come back into the bathroom to take a nap. That makes more sense. Although when you come in here... Wow, that was really remarkably loud. Although when you come in here, it makes it seem as if though... When this guy gets up, that's his first time getting up as a zombie. But who knows how long they've been here like this. Maybe zombies get kind of exhausted, they just kind of pass out. It's full of dirty water. Pull the plug. There's something inside the tub. A fucking ginormous key! Look at the size of that fucking key! Let's examine this thing. Self-defense gun that fires 22 magnum rounds. One round has been fired already. Right. It's just this little derringer. Now, buddy, are you only going to get up? A well-polished mirror. Are you only going to get up if I get that key? Because I don't got enough room to get that key. I guess I could use that health, but let's come out here first. Look alive, bitch! Well, we fucking got him, but that's not really how I wanted that to go. Equip that. Well, I am really glad that I did not go ahead and go down. That I did not go ahead and go down the stairs to fuck with those sharks, because I would have totally forgotten. Like, oh no, you need a fucking control room key. I guess maybe that's something that's semi sort of beneficial to me when I play Resident Evil games is that I have such fucking short term memory that I just plain forget. Okay, well we're not using this book for a while obviously. We're never fucking using that again I don't think. I wonder if you can reload it with actual magnum rounds. But then, like, why the fuck would you need to? Or why would you care? Let's take one green herb to kind of top ourselves off. I want to put this stuff away, but I might need to burn the other guy. I don't remember. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think I did. I think the last time I played, I didn't do it. I don't think it ever came back to bite me in the ass. Hmm. 
Because like here's a loading screen. And now there are some monsters that can get through loading screens. But this door is another loading screen. And I think the way I rationalized it was that there's no way this motherfucker can get through two loading screens. No way. Will you take the control room key? Uh. Yeah, he might come out here, maybe, but there's no way he's going through two fucking loading screens. We can leave him alone. Sorry your friend killed you. He hung himself. He must have felt real bad about it. Alright. It's a key for entering the control room. Okay, now I don't think we're messing with any zombies on the way. So let's go ahead and put that oil and shit back. I can't remember if there's more oil down where the sharks are. Probably... Probably not. Just always want to maximize the oil here. Okay, I'm fairly certain I don't need any of this stuff. Would I even need these extra bullets? Yeah, man, I love reloading animation. Okay, that's gotta be good. It's gotta be. Should I fucking save? What, was, what have we done? We got all the way out here. I guess we're going to go do something that's fairly dangerous that we can fuck up. I guess we should save. Again, usually I, I just, I don't. When I play Resident Evil, I tend to just not, I tend to just not really save. Well, maybe it's not just Resident Evil. I think I don't tend to save with a lot of things. Like, I think, I think I'm the kind of person that I save when I'm going to stop playing. And that's about it. I'm not really, like, safe and making tons of saves. I used to make a bunch of saves, you know, when you play something like Skyrim or something like that, and you have all these different multiple outcomes. But then when I started to look at my old saves, like, I don't even know where this was anymore. I don't even know what I was trying to do, and... If I did play all the way through this ginormous long fucking game, all the way from the beginning again, I mean, I don't know. Why do I keep all these multiple saves as if I'm going to keep altering this kind of bizarre video game timeline and like, no, this time I'm going to help out the other guy. Like, no, I'm not. Like, I'm not going to create these two separate saves on two separate save files and then do things one way, play for six hours and then go, okay, now let me just see what happens if I did it the other way. Like, I am not that fucking curious. So that's when I kind of broke myself of that little habit. Get in there. Again, I really think that the loading is hidden behind uh, that door opening animation and stuff. Speaking of stuff like Skyrim, since you have to load every time you go into like every building and stuff. I do kind of wish they would have done something like that. I guess in Skyrim they kind of like show you some sort of goofy, like here's some sort of elf axe or something. Oh, this song is so cool. Doom, boom, bing, boom. I really like the whole look of this whole place. Like this is when it really kind of started feeling spooky. It's almost kind of silly because it's like sharks, you're experimenting on sharks. You have so much resources. Like that just seems really weird. 
it's almost as if this game was bigger like if the ps1 could handle it it'd be like oh shit we gotta go to the tiger room they just they took everything like sharks bears tigers lions leopards vultures like anything that seemed like some sort of crazy creepy cool animal that like a basketball team would probably name themselves after they wanted to experiment on it Ooh, this box. It's locked from the other side. This box, it just seems like this. someone wanted to include this kind of gameplay of pushing more boxes to be like, look, 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 it's cool. Yeah, it's a regular block pushing puzzle, but we have things like physics in games now and shit like that. And because of that, we can now like push these boxes and they can float on the water. The gamers will appreciate that. Like, oh, yeah. These things can float. That's so cool. I'm really using my brain. Figuring out these puzzles and such. And then, of course, the practicality of it is just like, why would this be in a workspace? Why? Well, I don't know. That's just the 90s for you, man. That's the way... That's the way shit was in the 90s. We had everything was made out of clear plastic and what wasn't made out of clear plastic? Glue in the dark. Glue? Glowed. Fucking past tense of glow? Glue? Fucking waking up words right now. I'll have you know it's like 5 in the fucking morning. Cut me some slack, okay? But that's the way it was in the 90s. Just everything was weird. Everything was bright colors. We're just eating fucking bubble tape. And just, I don't know talking on your yak back playing video games where you push big ass heavy fucking boxes anyways i guess i'm gonna end the episode here and uh in the next episode we're gonna deal with some big ass fucking sharks and hopefully i don't i don't fuck that up i never have enough confidence in myself to think that i will make it through the aqua ring without anything happening so I'm, i just always feel like it's better to assume that i'm gonna fuck up somewhere this could be our death we're gonna get eaten by a shark in the next episode hope to see you there